Alright guys and gals, this is a long plane review for Toki on the Amstrad CPC, released by the Amstrad GGP team in 2022. And yes, this is a brand new release, an unofficial homebrew port of the classic coin-op arcade game that was released by the TAD Corporation all the way back in 1989. But there was an official port planned by Ocean Software on the Amstrad GX4000 console of all things that sadly never materialised. Adverts in magazines were placed, including specific ones for the GX4000 with real screenshots showing the end of level 1 and its boss battle. Indeed, Amstrad Action Magazine got sent their own exclusive screenshots to feature in their news pages in their June 1991 issue 69 and it looks really freaking good. Now apparently the coder of the game John Looker of DJL Software completed the whole of the first level and handed it to Ocean Software but told them it would require a higher capacity cartridge. Jigs 4000 carts came in two sizes. 256k is the standard size and 512k is the high capacity which Toki would require. Ocean, who had seen that earlier GX4000 games like Robocop 2 etc not selling well, got cold feet on the project as later reported in Amstrad Action's October 1991 issue 73 and I guess they were waiting to see if the GX4000 would have a resurgence in the run up to Christmas 1991's market. It didn't, so the Toki project was quietly cancelled. What a shame. But thankfully, 30 years later, the almighty Amstrad GGP team have finally given us the Toki game the CPC community have all been waiting for and deserve. Now, this is going to be a fairly long, long play because the GGP team are running a high score table and competition on their website and I'm going to show you all how to achieve pretty much the maximum score possible on their game which will involve some scummy scoring techniques and pretty much breaking their game but we'll get this booted up now and running. So Toki is a platformer mixed with run and gun and a very small smidge of puzzling involved I would say knowing where and how to place yourself to get through certain situations and certainly against um, boss battles. Um, you certainly um, know, need to know how to um, get past certain bosses in a very specific way. Hmm. Anyway, oh, very nice loading screen here and a choice of languages to choose from. Although um, I wish the GGP team had come to me for some of the English translations with the grammar. But hey, hey GGP team, come to me and I'll help you with your English translations next time. Anyway, but yeah, really lovely loading screen here. Very, very, very nice. Um, 128k only this game by the way so it won't work on a 464 with a disk drive unless you've got a memory expansion. Uh, but they, yeah, they've uh, managed to fit in a lot a lot of stuff into the 128k. Absolutely bursting at the seams of stuff. And if you let the um, this run uh, for a little bit um, and it's loaded up before the start of level one, you'll get a little introduction sequence. Just look. Here it goes. Toki, we need to have a talk. You see your friends too often. Bit bad grammar there and spelling. You never understood me. That's Miho, his girlfriend. Help me. Move on. <laughs> Don't make 30 years this time. Wait, it should be. So yeah, um, their story, well the GGP story, differs somewhat from the original story in the arcade original and other ports of the game. Uh, as we start off here, 
Um, in the in the original, um, Toki starts out as a man or Neanderthal. He gets zapped by a wizard and turns into an ape after the wizard cap captures his uh, or kidnaps his girlfriend. But here, the GGP team are just doing their own thing. And uh, off we go. Look how gorgeous this looks with animated backgrounds and bright, bold, colourful graphics. And it zips along at a really fast pace. And what I'm doing here, boys and girls, is trying to maximise my score. And you should be reaching here just below 40,000 points as we get to the first, um, I suppose, mid-level mid -level boss. Blow up there and the screen shakes. And a little uh, extra touch here with the rolling boulder from Indiana Jones. That wasn't in the arcade original, but the uh, GGP team have added this in. And we're zipping along here on the first level really quickly. Lots going on. Um, <laughs> too fast for me to talk and go through everything. And there's oh, the big changes since the first demo in 2019, which we exclusively showed you uh, on our uh, weekly um, Friday Am stream. That's our weekly Friday live stream on my YouTube channel every Friday 9 p.m. Cheap plug. <laughs> um, we got the very first look at Toki uh, back in 2019 on our Christmas live stream. Um, back then. Um, it wasn't fully scrolling, it was kind of kind of had a push scroll system. But the GGP team went back and added proper scrolling into the game. This don't half shift and move about a lot uh, quickly now. And I think it is sort of scrolling um, and moving around, um, maybe at quite a few, uh, moving uh, about several pixels at a time to make it sort of m uh, move really quickly. So it's kind of hard to estimate what sort of frame rate this is running at. But I think it is sort of jumping along, maybe like skipping a few pixels at a time. But um, oh, a little bit of collision detection issue, uh, collision detection issue here on that little crab there. But hey, oh, we eventually kill it there. So occasional little sort of quirk and bug here and there, but nothing, nothing too bad. The route here taken on this level differs from the arcade, so the GGP team sort of have gone their own way at places in in their version of the game. Hey, it's their decision, um, and we're going to come to the boss here. And the boss is just like uh, in the arcade original, pretty much. I think. I think he or she behaves just like, um, pretty much just like the boss in the arcade original. But if you want to score um, lots of extra points here, you can do so by just like um, shooting like the mini monkeys that the boss um, throws at you. So this is a good opportunity here to like rack up some extra points, which we're going to do. Um, so, but you, so, so we're going to do that whilst we run down the clock, the timing there ticking down. Yeah, so you might want to think about maybe like using up your lives here and let the clock run down to zero, use up a life because we've got uh, six lives here we managed to uh, amass on this level. Maybe, maybe run down the clock and lose a life and then run down the clock again, use up another life. But actually... There's another level with another boss where we can like um, um, score a load of points by shooting th that boss's projectiles and, and score far higher. So we're just going to let the clock run down just before zero here and then move on and not like use up our lives with the clock running down. So yeah, that's what we'll do here. Um, later in the later on the in the video, we'll be looking at other versions and conversions of Toki with video footage. So watch out for that. Uh, what else to mention here? Um, Toki was known as Juju Densetsu in Japan. That's its original title before being renamed to Toki or Toki. Some people call it Toki. I like to call it Toki. I've always called it Toki, but we had a little vote in a live stream um, the other week. Uh, most people like to call it Toki. I always call it Toki. There you go. 
and we move on to level two here. Slightly different layout at the start here. Um, in the arcade version, it, it slopes up rather than a uh, straight sort of horizontal platforms here. And you can shoot the uh, monkey with the cannon from below, which you couldn't do in the arcade original. So some slight variances from the arcade original. But this is the level where you can like swim underwater. And look at this beautiful skyline. And that's what you can achieve on the Amstrad with its like awesome colour palette. Look at that. Who needs a plus machine to achieve that? And it's amazing what um, like the Amstrad GTP team have pulled off here. Oh yes, yeah, so and when you pick up the helmet here, you can score lots of bonus points. You get, uh, uh, get actually much more bonus points uh, for killing enemies uh, whilst wearing the um, the American football helmet, uh, rather than shooting the enemies. So look at that, lot thousand points I think every time you hit an enemy whilst wearing the helmet. So make use of it as quick as you can whilst underwater. But lots and lots of extra bonus points there. And up above us, there's actually a hidden secret here. Another bonus life, which is easily missed. Unfortunately, though, our helmet has run out. Just be very careful here because the uh, sea creatures can suddenly just appear right on top of you. So I'm just being very cautious here. I'm going to try and kill as many as I can here to get as much points as possible. So, purpose of this long play is to maximise our score as much as possible. And I think it's amazing they've managed to fit in all of pretty much um, the arcade version of Toki here, including the underwater sections. Later on in this uh, video, we'll see they've actually managed to fit in the like the minecart section. But Toki's riding on like kind of a minecart, like Indiana Jones Temple of Doom style. They managed to get that in the game. A disc load here for a mid-level boss. Um, he should appear any second. Here he is. Not made mention of the music yet. The music is absolutely fantastic. And we get boss music here as well. Actually, that boss is pretty easy, especially if you got the uh, fire weapon. Although how the fire weapon works under the flame or flame we weapon works underwater is anyone's guess. But try and stick with that um, throughout this level. Now in the arcade version, uh, the special weapons run out after a period of time. But in the uh, Amstrad version here, they stay with you until you like get hit. So I like that. It's always a shame when uh, your yeah, special weapons run out after a period of time. I like that um, in the Toki GTP version, they stay with you and you can use them on the bosses. Again, uh, a boss from the arcade version perfectly um, recreated here, including uh, the boss's attacks. You don't get any points for destroying the uh, boss's um, projectiles. So no extra points uh, here to grind, just kill the boss and move on. And we'll move on to stage three. And another disc load. Oh yeah, collect the coins. 10 coins um, gets you another bonus life. So it's important to be collecting coins as a few to be collected on this level here. Um, I forget what the name of this level from the arcade, but we're underground, lots of lava, probably inside a volcano here, so watch out. More awesome music as well, so fantastic work on the graphics, sprites, uh, music, sound effects with the music, which the sound effects are all are awesome as well. Um, slight differences on this level compared to the arcade, on the arcade you have to collect keys to like unlock um, platforms that move down. Um, so some slight differences. But otherwise, um, pretty, pretty much as close to the arcade as they want to do. And I, I'm suitably impressed. 
Uh, controls are brilliant as well. I should point out as well that they utilize the second fire button on this version of Toki. So you can use the second fire button to jump and your main fire button uh, to use your weapon. And that works fantastically. Having the second fire button to jump means there's less mistakes being made where you, where you don't accidentally jump when you don't want to. And you can use um, up and right to do diagonal shooting and all that kind of stuff. And controls are absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, nice, tight and responsive controls. And it plays absolutely fantastically. There's a spider just off um, the edge of the screen there that, that, that I was shooting there. Sometimes occasional little bit of slowdown, but uh, not not much though, not much. A little change up of music there. I, I like how there's like a sometimes a change of music as you get further into the level. Nice touch that. Tricky section here. You can stand on the little edge of that platform there, you can take out that spider and then just immediately jump down because some of the spiders explode and send out a shower of bullets or venom or whatever it is. Okay, we're very close to the boss of this level and this boss is where we can rack up an, an insane amount of score. And it's, uh, and it's this point in the video coming up where, well, things will get a little bit boring. <laughs> and, um, yes. And this is where, yes, we're going to rack up like a millions, a million, millions and millions of score. And it will be this point where we will actually do some, look at the other versions of Toki to make, try and make things more interesting. And we'll show you some video footage of all the other conversions of Toki, including the arcade original. Anyway, we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's show you the boss in action anyway. And this boss um, is probably the second hardest boss in this version of Toki, if you're just trying to play normally. Because he has like two sets of projectiles he spews out at you. Um... And you need to know where to place yourself to avoid them if you're just trying to defeat him normally. Um, it can easily kill you quite quickly if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but here, I'm actually trying to shoot the projectiles to rack up a nice big fat score. And if you manage to shoot the projectiles each time, it gets you like uh, a few thousand points. As you can see, my score there has been is racking up quite nicely, a few thousand points at a time. So what I do is, I'm uh, for the first set of them, I move forward, shoot up, up and right diagonally, and then move back left and shoot upwards. If I get myself in the right place each time. Um, yeah, a few thousand points at a time. Yes, there you go. So what I do is position myself um, around. Um, using that sort of second black mark on the green floor there. So I move forward just to the right of it. And then I move back left just with my left foot just uh, just behind it. And if I get my sort of nice rhythm going, I can keep it up. And oh boy, this is going to take a long time because I'm going to use up pretty much all 11 lives. As you can see there, my life counter is there in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to basically use up the timer. Um, so when the timer goes down to zero, I'm going to carry on. Keep on keep using up my life to rack up over a score of over 2 million points. To try and get the maximum amount of score possible on Toki. And guys, this is going to be the most boring bit of gameplay footage ever. Because it's going to take nearly 30 minutes so you might want to skip forward to the 50 minute mark on the video if you want to um however apart from um <laughs> this apart from uh, just like showing you there's a little bit of footage here until we get to the um the timer going to zero here I'm actually going to show you some extra footage during this boss battle fight. We're actually going to have a look at pretty much all... Oh, there we go. We just died there. And now we're back to our normal weapon. 
So what I'm gonna do here, guys, for the next, um, I don't know, uh, 10 or so minutes, we're gonna look at the arcade fo uh, footage, and I'm gonna show you all the levels in the arcade, edited down, um, just for comparison uh, purposes. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the arcade footage and see how it compares uh, Amstratoki to the arcade footage and after the arcade version I'm going to show you video footage of all the other versions of Toki uh, and their conversions to the uh, Commodore 64, Atari Lynx, NES, Atari ST, Commodore Amiga and the Sega Mega Drive Genesis version which is completely unique actually as well. So here it is running on the arcade and you can see just how accurate, or reasonably accurate, um, the Amstrad version is to the arcade version. And what a great job the Amstrad GTP team have done here. And yeah, um, as you can see, um, if you can remember back to the first level, um, they have tried to replicate things um, as best they could. And I think they've done a really fantastic job. Um, the rec they recreated that first level really, really nicely. As you can see, they've got the um, they've got this mid-level boss. Although it didn't move around like it like it is uh, here in the arcade original. So yeah, I've just added these things. I, I thought I'd add these, uh, add this extra footage in here to make things interesting. I thought you'd like to see the um, original Toki here, at least in its glory. Um, we didn't have the um, parallax scrolling of the first level, but if you stick around, um, later levels in the Amstrad Toki version does have parallax scrolling, believe it or not. So yeah, wait, w watch out for that. Oh yeah, I killed myself there by mistake. Um, by the way, um, th th this boss here is supposed to be speeding the letters burp, um, but on, on this version, I, it seems to be speeding the letters P-U-N or something. I can't quite make out. That's definitely the letter N. Is that the letter P and O, PON? I can't quite make out what letters that, that it's supposed to be spewing here. Anyway. We'll forward on the arcade footage here. We're going to show you sort of high highlighted clips of each of the levels. Oh yeah, Amstrad Toki is missing the um, the balancing weights there, as you can see, which, which boing you up. So, um, and this whole section here was missing on the um, Amstrad Toki. They went a completely different route on the first level of Toki, the uh, Amstrad TGP. And that, uh, that waterfall thing was missing. So that, 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 this was like a big difference uh, on this version. Um, yeah, the uh, Amstrad Toki um, added a whole new sort of section where you go wrap down and round. But here's the boss on the, the coin up version. Um, and it, yeah, it behaves pretty similarly on the Amstrad Toki. She, did, she does jump forward um, on the Amstrad Toki, but we could sort of caught her, um, and she just sort of... Yeah, there, there she goes, throwing, throwing the little monkeys. But there you go. Yeah, there you go. We didn't get the scrolling map on the Amstrad version. That's a shame they didn't get added, but I, I, I would assume that they ran out of memory. Uh, here's the second level. As I said, it starts off on a, a slope. On the Amstrad version here, it didn't. You can shoot the monkey from below that was on the cannon. And here's the water. Uh, here's, here's Toki swimming in the water. Which is re which was really nicely re recreated on the Amstrad version. Very nicely done. I 
And here's the mid-level boss on uh, the arcade version. Again, it was really nicely done uh, on this Amstrad version. So yeah, the, uh, the GGP team have done a fantastic job here. And then you come straight, pretty much straight to the boss. And if you remember this boss, oh yeah, sorry, I got wrecked there. If you remember this boss again, uh, like like on the coin up version, um, the boss behaves just like on, uh, just like it did on the Amstrad in the Amstrad version. So again, top marks the Amstrad GTP team for getting that right. Oh. We'll just take a pause here because the timer from the arcade version, because the timer is just about to run out. Pay attention to my life bottom right corner there. We've got nine lives. The timer runs out. And the lives go from nine down to eight, then down to seven. So there's a slight bug there, unfortunately, um, where the timer run goes to zero and the game takes two lives off us, not one. So... Um, yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. So, um, um, yeah, I don't know why that happens. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hmm. that's unfortunate. So, perhaps not be able to get like a uh, the bigger score I was hoping to get, but never mind. Anyway, I back to the arcade footage. We're now on level three, which uh, we were just doing here on the Amsterdam version. The, the arcade version does have like swinging ropes, which is missing on this version of the game, but never mind. And here's the boss that we are fighting currently. As you can see, it spews out the words burr. But you can see how accurate uh, the Amstrad version is otherwise. It, jump, it does jump around a little bit more on the arcade one. And he's a little bit more crazy, but uh, other than that, they've done such a brilliant job. Now, a little bit sort of uh, spoilers here because you can see the next level coming up is the Ice Palace. But you know what to expect, and how it will, in the, just for comparison purposes, coming up. Um, so bear this in mind, keep this fresh in your mind, and you will see uh, just, just just to see how this will compare later on. So pay attention to like the disappearing ice blocks and how they fall away and all that kind of stuff. And here's the boss uh, for level four, the Ice Palace. You get a sort of giant frozen woolly mammoth that throws his like tusks about. There's an extending trunk thing. Uh, and then we get the dark jungle, the dark dense jungle. Uh, I think it's level 5. It has rain effects and lightning. Will the Amster GTP version have lightning and rain effects? We shall see later on. Hmm. And here's the boss uh, of, I think, level 5. Oh yes, these are the hands that grabbed um, the girlfriend at the start of the game. Is it Miho? Who did the dastardly deed for the evil wizard. Will we get to see this boss in Amstrad Toki? And how will it how will that be recreate how will that be recreated? Very tough boss in the arcade, by the way. go and then essentially this is like the final level in the game uh, it's a very very long level and the game now restricts you to in the ERK it only restricts you to four continues whereas like you, you can be feeding credits as much as you want prior to that these blocks that come down you've got flames that come out the walls as well see there, you've got that to avoid, and also you get uh, these like minecarts to ride, a la Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. 
will this be in Amstrad Toki? We shall find out later on. And then he goes straight to the final boss of the game, which has three attack stages. The wizard, in his like, sort of original form. And then he turns into this creature that throws out sort of like boomerangs. And then his final form sort of floats around with like a dragon head and arms or something like that. Shoot the flaming heart there. Shoot it enough times at the flaming heart. And, yeah, and he eventually dies. And then you get a rather nice ending. And that is Toki in the arcade. And then Toki returns to his human self and is re reunited with his girlfriend, I think called Miho. And you get a nice ending. And there you go. So that is Toki in the arcade, and we will return back to our Amstrad footage in full now, because we're about to hit 1 million points. What will happen to the score? Are you watching the score? Ha 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 And it goes like, basically resets to, resets to zero, because there's not enough digits for it to cope. <laughs> so we now have reached 1 million points. There we go. So anyway, let's um, let's bring in some footage then of the other versions of the game, and we're going to start with the Commodore 64 version. And um, this isn't bad actually. Um, I think this was released on cartridge as well. I think for the Commodore 64, I might be wrong, but um, nicely presented so far. A nice intro on the uh, title screen, nice and colourful, and not a bad red, not a bad rendition of the uh, theme uh, either from the Sid Chip. Uh, and Ocean Software have not done a bad job here. Um, and yeah, it plays a decent game of Toki. Um, it's a little bit awkward on one fire button because sometimes when you want to be angling your shots upwards or diagonally up, you end up pushing up to jump. So you have to sort of remember getting the habit of pressing the fire button first before pushing up and diagonally up, otherwise you might accidentally jump and jump up into an enemy you're meant to be shooting upwards at. So you can have some accidental deaths a lot because you accidentally end up jumping before shooting and argh. So, you have to be quite cautious in Commodore 64 Toki because of that. But otherwise, this is a very respectable conversion. Um, um, I mean, compared to other versions of Toki, it perhaps looks the least impressive. However, I think this is very, very good. I don't think there is actually, out of all the versions of Toki, a bad version of Toki I've played. They've all actually very, very good versions of Toki. This actually, unfortunately though, kind of looks the weakest and plays the weakest. But that doesn't mean this is a bad version of Toki. This is very, very, very good actually. And um, I think anyone who's a Commodore 64 owner would be very, very happy with this version. And I'm not being disparaging about it. I think this is very, very, very good. Um, it's just that I think um, there are very, very good versions of Toki, other versions of Toki out there. Um, this just looks perhaps a little bit sort of basic compared to the other ones. And that's just unfortunate rather than me being, I don't know, unfair. But otherwise, very, very good. Um, and I think any Commodore 64 owner would be quite happy about this version of Toki and uh, should be um, a worthy addition to any Commodore 64 owner's collection and uh, you'll be very quite pleased, I think you'd be quite pleased about this one back in the day uh, and if you had it today as well. Alright, moving on to the Atari Lynx. First time I've ever set up an Atari Lynx emulator actually and actually probably the first time I've actually played an Atari Lynx game. Um, apologies about the sort of slightly glitchy sounding um, um, sound at the start here. That's purely um, issues with the emulator, which clears up in a few seconds. 
Uh, but this is really nice. What lovely, colourful graphics. Nicely presented. And it plays really well. Um, as we get things uh, kicking off. Uh, um, about now. And they've done a cracking job here. This plays a really good game of uh, Toki. Uh, I think this is the only portable version of Toki. Um, I, I, would have, I would have thought this would have worked quite well on the Game Boy, actually, but no Game Boy version. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. Um, but yeah, this is really freaking good. Look how bright, bold, and colourful this is. There's some animated backgrounds there as well. Uh, plays nice and smooth. It's got all the things from the arcade in by the looks of it. Nice music, nice sound effects. A really freaking good version of Toki. I'm, I'm really surprised. Um, I think anyone ha who had the Atari Lynx would have been very, very happy about this version of Toki. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and look at this. Uh, this midsection uh, sort of boss thing, the, this contraption, it moves around. It's, it's nice, smooth, uh, plays at a decent rate. Uh, no, don't seem to be much slowdown or anything like that. And yeah, very, very impressive version of Toki on the Atari Lynx. I like this a lot. Um, Um, obviously heavily pixelated if you play this on a modern uh, monitor, uh, you know, <laughs> zoomed in and all that kind of stuff. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think on a proper link, uh, on, a, on, a, on its nice screen, this will look really, really cracking. But like, yeah, excellent stuff. Really, really good. Um, and I, yeah, I'm really impressed by this. Yeah, I'm definitely going to delve into more of the Lynx library at some point, if the, if the conversions are as good as this. Yeah, I think you can actually aim diagonally down, but I, will, um, I forgot to do that. There you go, Atari Lynx. Alright, moving on to the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, I thought that with this version, quite common with uh, NES ports, they often just went their own way and went and did a completely different game, often turn it into some kind of RPG adventure um, or whatever. But no, with the NES version, um, they kept it pretty much a straight port of the arcade. And kept it pretty much fairly pure. As far as I know, anyway, I only played through the first couple of levels, and they're pretty much identical um, to the uh, arcade version. And looking at the uh, map scrolling screen here, it looks like the levels are the same as well. Yep. Looks like the same amount of levels, so um, yeah. So it looks like a fairly straight and pure port of the uh, coin op. Maybe some concessions made to like how the NES um, scrolls and does sprites and backgrounds and stuff like that. Otherwise, it looks like a very decent port of Toki. Uh, maybe some flickeriness and sprites and stuff like that, uh, but it's pretty common for the NES. Maybe not like super accurate, but like otherwise, yeah, uh, it looks like a decent version of Toki. Um, maybe just sl slightly more cartoony in its look. Um, maybe not as pretty as other versions, but like, yeah, this is um, decent, definitely. Maybe I'll probably put this alongside the Commodore 64 version or something like that. I don't know. But I think I, I, I'm still more impressed by that Lynx version. Um, I think I'd rather play the Lynx version uh, out of the three so far. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is decent along with the Commodore 64. But I'm still thinking about that Lynx port. 
Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty st pretty standard stuff for the NES this, isn't it? Yeah. As uh, as you'd expect. But um, I'm surprised I didn't try and turn this into some kind of RPG type thing and do something slightly different, like they did with a lot of their, a lot of their versions of arcade games or whatever. But yeah, I'm um, I'm surprised they kept it pr pretty pure. Anyway, moving on to the 16 bits now, the Atari ST. I, I was expecting this to be pr uh, a pretty poor version. Um, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. So this uh, released by Ocean Software. Um, nice intro intro sequence here. Nice bold and bold and colourful. Decent music. Although it's only a short intro sequence. Um, um, nice music though. And we get the uh, scrolling map. Okay, nicely animated. And good music here, again. Good rendition of the theme. Signs are good so far. And here we go. And it looks really nice and colourful. Yeah, and it actually scrolls and moves really nicely and smoothly. I was like, oh, actually, this is really nice. Yeah, and this plays really nicely. Really nice. So I've actually, we've actually got a decent version of Toki on the Atari ST. And a pretty accurate version as well. I think they've done a really decent port here. Um, shame, not, shame like the waterfall isn't animated or anything like that, but otherwise, um, yeah, this is really good accurate port. Looks like the uh, mid-level boss thing is animated and moving around. Yeah. Um, no idea what this scored in magazines at the time, but um, I think this would have got quite good reviews. Apparently made by um, Ocean France. Um, Ocean at the time opened up a um, development team in France to handle a lot of their 16-bit games at the time for their ST and Amiga developments. And uh, this is one of their this is one of their ports. And they've, they've done a really good job here. I like this. I like this a lot. I think they've done a really good job on the ST version. Um, so yeah, yeah, so quite surprised by this one. Really, really good stuff. Ah, just got wrecked there. And we move on to the Amiga version. Now, I, I was, especially from this intro, I was expecting this to be a port of the ST version. Given how good the ST version was, you would have thought that went, well, you did a really good job the ST version, lads. Just port that over to the Amiga and just slap on some nice music especially we've got the intro sequence and the map uh, map scroll sequence here like looking identical to the st1 i was just like it's just gonna be the st1 with the nice music here got some really nice um, music here actually that's different sorry 100 percent. this is going to be an st port well wait and see wait and see Um, no! We get a different version. Look at this! We get like a whole different version with parallax scrolling and like multicolor backgrounds. Look at this! I don't know, maybe that may have shared some assets with the ST version, maybe in the Toki Sprite and some of the foreground backgrounds, but like we have. 
like that lovely sort of purple background that's parallax, the blue sky and all that. But yeah. That's really nice. Maybe they share some code and some of the graphics assets. I don't know. But we get a whole like different soundtrack as well. I think it maybe moves slightly better as well, generally. But yeah, really, really good version on the Amiga. So they, did, so they didn't get a uh, straight ST port there. They get a lot, lots of graphical enhancements and musical enhancements as well. So yeah, excellent. So an even better version on the Amiga. So maybe the Amiga users, Amiga owners, don't feel so shortchanged here. So yeah, Amiga version probably the best one out the lot so far. ST coming in second place. Atari Lynx coming third. Maybe the NES um, coming in fourth place. Commodore 64 coming in fifth. Oh, of course, maybe the um, arcade coming in at the very top of the pile. We've got one other version to check out after this, though. I didn't know whether I should shoot footage for this one or not, um, because... Um, this is a, a ver there's a version of Toki, a conversion of Toki, which is completely different to the arcade. Um, that shares no similarities really, apart from the use of the character and how he mo moves and jumps about. It's the Sega Genesis version, or the Sega Mega Drive, if you're from the UK and other parts of the world. This is Toki going ape spit on the Sega Mega Drive Genesis. Uh, we got a whole different intro sequence here, rather elaborate one, um, and um, this goes its completely uh, own way with totally different levels, it completely redesigned. And to be honest with you, I find this I find this completely boring to play. I had to play this in the Tubers High School Challenge thing, which is where a bunch of us get together and play games for like high school runs and. There's a, um, and this this game goes on forever with its levels, and they're really long and boring. Oh, actually, this one is renamed as um, uh, was it Juju Densetsu? I think it's it's called itself there. That's also its name. Toki was also originally called Juju Densetsu in Japan. That's what, that's what its original name was. And as you can see here, um. It's level layout and design is completely different um, to the original Toki. And I find the book there was really long and boring. They just go on forever with very little imagination and design, unlike the original Toki. And I find this completely dull and boring to play. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, I don't recommend this much, but um, it, ha it has its fans out there. It uses a lot of the elements of the original Toki, but. Um, ah. I don't know, if you're all tockied out from the original Toki and you want some more Toki, maybe you might find some enjoyment out of that one. But there you go, that is all the versions of Toki. Um, there was also um, a version of... Oh, actually, before we get to that, we we're just about to score 2 million points. Boys and girls, you watching the score? There we go. We're now on 2 million points! Hurrah! And we're also about to kill the boss as well very shortly. Because the time is about to run out. And there was also an unreleased but complete version of Toki for the Atari 7800. Apparently it was developed in 1993. Which is a bit strange given Atari discontinued that system in early 1992. And there's five levels in the game. And there's videos of it on YouTube. But it was never released officially. Oh, apparently as well there was a Spectrum port planned of Toki. Which is based on the Amstrad code. Um, of course, the Amstrad version of Toki was never officially released, as we talked about at the start of this video. Um, oh yes, there's also a Toki remake in 2019 for the PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Switch from Microids of all companies. Yes, Microids, that, they were originally a publisher of 8-bit titles in the 1980s, um, including for the Amstrad CPC, and they're still going in 2022. Um, and apparently that version was alright. It's a straight remake of the arcade version, but with fancy cartoonized graphics. 
I've not played it myself though. Although it didn't seem to add much to it beyond the fancy graphics and new music. But there you go. Alright, but um, eight seconds left on the clock. So we're going to have to start thinking about killing the boss here. He's about one or two hits away from death anyway. And finally we can move on to the rest of the game. We'll just try and squeeze out a few more points here. With about three more seconds left. And let's go for it. Time is still ticking down actually after we killed him. So with one second spare, we don't want to have a game over just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we did it. We did it there. So we're on 2 million, 96,000 on 100 points there. <laughs> Nine of digits to show it there, but there we go. Sorry, that took over 30 minutes to eke out those points there, but we got there. We got there in the end. We got there in the end. Anyway, I hope the footage there of the other versions and the original version of Toki on the arcade there made up for that. Made up for that. <laughs> All right, here we are on level four. No more scummy point scoring to. Um, no. We'll just blast through these levels pretty much now. And look at this beautiful ice level. Looks fun, absolutely fantastic. The Amstrad has really nice blues in its colour palette. Um, use nice effects there. And those ice blocks that were falling away there. At the start, that was nice. And that, you can see the ice there, like the colours just fading in and out of the background. That's a really nice touch. A little penguin there. You can actually shoot through the wall here if you sort of like go, but you keep holding fun down fine. You can move left and right. You can actually sort of glitch your fire through the wall there. Just moving left and right. And there's a helmet to pick up there. Pick up the helmet. And remember, just walk into enemies with the helmet on to score a thousand points at a time. Or was it 10,000? It's 10,000 points, I think, a time. Wow. Oh, I want to keep the flame though, so don't pick up that. So I shot that um, uh, blue demon in the flying in the air there because I didn't want to accidentally pick up the uh, other power up, which is like the multiple bullet pick up. I want to keep the flame because it will quickly dispose of the boss at the end of the level. Now I could just float there and actually just keep um, shooting the green green fish that the squid, there you go, shoots out. So you could just keep sort of like floating there and uh, being scummy and, and just like getting loads of points from, from that, but it would just take forever. I, don't, uh, I can't be asked. there's not enough points to be gained from that. And we're straight on to the boss here. Jump over, and that will come back round and jump back round over it. But if you've got the flame weapon, if you're quick, you could kill the woolly, the woolly ice mammoth very, very quickly with the flame weapon if you've got the flame. So that's why you want to keep the flame weapon if you can throughout that level. Otherwise, you just have to keep jumping over the red tusk that it throws out at you. And you have to time your jumps absolutely perfectly. Otherwise, that's a very tough boss if you don't have the flame weapon. But anyway, we're on to level five of seven levels. So we're getting quite close to the end of the game now. Level six is quite short, by the way. I don't want to give, anyway, give away any spoilers. Now, this is the level, if you remember from the arcade, that had the rain and the lightning effects. And you can see in the background of the level, flashing lightning... But do we get the rain effects? Wait and see. Oh, nice new music. And we collect the coins. I think 10 coins gets you an extra life. We've only got one life left, so we need those coins. Oh, here comes the rain! As the cult one sang. There we go. Hopefully that this blue demon thing or ghost thing, drop spears, will uh, give us... Yes, the flame. Just move very cautiously, move bit by bit uh, at the start of this level. 
and that will get you through easily enough. Um, this is one of these levels where the graphics um, is very, very, very colourful. And it might be a little bit hard to make out some enemies at times. So just move very slowly. You've got plenty of time on the clock on this level. Just move bit by bit and then you're okay from here on in pretty much. You want to try and keep the flame, but you get there is another flame pickup later on. So if you have to like pick up that other weapon there, then then so be it. But we we're okay to avoid we're okay to avoid it there. Immediately fire as you start moving onto the screen here because that thing just flies straight into you. And there's a bonus life there. In the arcade version there's like some the special sneakers you have to pick up so you can jump to get that bonus life but that's not here on this Amsterdam version that's okay animated waterfalls very nice oh change up of the music there I think nice touch Ah, these are the enemies that are indestructible you cannot kill these green circular things I don't know what they, they're meant to be. Are they kind of like sort of coiled snakes? I, I don't know what the hell those things are. But anyway, they cannot be killed. So don't waste your time on them. There you go. There's another flame weapon pick up there. Make sure you've got that and keep that to the end of the level. boss is coming up here and actually this boss is actually really easy on the arcade this is one of the hardest bosses but unfortunately on this Amstrad version is actually stupidly easy uh, but and no no points to be farmed on this boss thankfully for for those of you watching thankfully just move far left and if you're at the far left of the screen the hands and the feet can't get you. Very impressive looking on the Amstrad, but for some weird reason, I don't know if they, uh, I don't know if it's a playtesting fail. The hands can't reach you if you're far left, and it's stupidly easy to defeat. <laughs> so uh, just keep firing, um, jump and fire, jump and fire, and eventually your bullets will get through and hit the heart in the middle of the hands and the feet there, and very very easy boss. Ah, look! So, this takes you to a, a whole level dedicated to the, um, call it the minecart. Um, uh, we get a whole level dedicated to it. So, normally in the arcade version, the minecart is in the middle of the final level. Uh, but on Toki on the Amstrad, it's we just get a whole level dedicated to it, which kind of makes sense to break to break it up. Because I think it'd be too much to have it in the middle of a, an existing level. Um, occasionally, there's a little bit of a glitch with like shooting and trying to hit some of these spikes. Sometimes your bullets will go through them. That's the only little problem I've had and noticed in this version. So far, I've not encountered it on this playthrough. Bonus life to get there. Jump. And there we go. We did it there. Really short level. I kind of wish it was a little bit longer because it's one of the most fun levels in the game. I kind of want more of that level. <laughs> there you go. Probably the most fun level in the game. And I, I want more of it. And wow, look at this. We're on the final level. And look at that multiple parallax scrolling on the go in the background. Wow. I think they've pulled out all the uh, tricks and saved like the best for last. So we'll come on to level seven, the final level. And look at that beautiful, um, like, I don't know what, that flamey sunset-y thing in the background at the top of the screen there. That looks really nice as well. What, a, what an impressive looking final level. Oh, those giant, what, what those monkey head things are? Evil gits. 
All right. Now, these pillar things, whatever the hell they are, but you can actually shoot them and actually rack up a stupid amount of points. If you want to do it, you can do. So we're trying to get the most maximum amount of score possible. So if you get a good position, you can shoot them straight when they're down and diagonally up. And eventually, they will stop after a certain amount of hits. So if you want to rack up a maximum, uh, like we're trying to do, we're trying to get eke out the maximum amount of score possible on this on this playthrough. Well. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to try and shoot uh, all of them as we can. And we're going to try and do this. See if it's possible to do this final level with destroying every one of these um, crushers. These pillars. I'm going to try and shoot and destroy and disable each one of the, every one of these pillars. And we're going to try and do it and see if it's possible to do it within the time limit of this level to do it without the time limit running out and and killing the final boss so that's my goal on this final level we're going to try and beat this final level with killing the final boss and shooting and destroying each one of these uh, pillars so we'll see if it's going to be possible and it's going to be really really difficult to try and do and pull off because there's a lot of them and we're going to be down to the final second Could be very, very, very tight and close. So keep an eye on that timer, boys and girls. It's going to be down to like the very, very last second. And this isn't the last of the um, pillars and crushes on this level. You can see my score like going up now. What are we on now? Two million. Oh, it's added an extra zero at the end of the score, but actually, it, it, it's, the, the scoring's glitched. So we're actually on the moment two million, uh, one hundred forty-four thousand eight hundred and uh, yeah, two million one hundred forty-four five thousand one hundred and sixty at the moment. So I wonder what we'll get up to by the end of the end of this. Fifty-five seconds left on the clock. Four lives. Yeah, lovely graphics on this level. I love like the rotating cogs as well. They've got on the backgrounds there. Such they've added such lovely, uh, lovely touches to this game as well. But what a fantastic production the GTP team have done on this game. God knows when they started work on this game. The first uh, playable demo of the game came out in 2019. I think of the first level. Um, so I guess maybe they've been working on this since 2017. So maybe at least five years in development or something like that. So wow, what a long time and what a great production they've done on this. Maybe even started longer than that. Who knows? Maybe the GTP team can tell us in the comments. Nearly there. I think this may be the last one of these pillars and crushers. Thank God. Right, let's move. Go, go, Toki, go. You can see the window there, the parallax scrolling. Wow. Just absolutely superb stuff. Oh, that green flying thing's like really slowed us down there. Right, 30 seconds left. <sighs> Landed on his projectile and survived. That was really lucky. Really lucky. I'm surprised of all the parallax scrolling. We're not getting any slowdown. So, really cleverly programmed. Wow, multiple levels of parallax scrolling. You can see the bottom there. There's even more layers of parallax. I think we're very near the boss now. Yeah, this will be where the boss is. We need to move left very, very quickly when he spawns. If he's loading in. Right, move. let's just move forward very carefully. Move left very quickly. First uh, first of three iterations of the boss. As the, of the wizard. 
Second iteration, shoot the green head. Watch out for his hands, move far left, and then jump over the hand here. Shoot the green head. And here's the third iteration. You need to move sl slightly to the right, jump between the two fireball attacks there. And duck down here. Well, actually, just don't jump. And then just keep keeping that position there. We've got three seconds left on the clock. Sh jump and shoot the heart. Two seconds. And we got him. With one second to spare. And we did it. Oh, the, the clock still took, uh, uh, went down to zero and lost a life, but we did it. We managed to do that. Honey, you're finally here. Come see me quickly. Why do you hesitate? Well, it took time. <laughs> Who were with you? Oh, hey, friend. It's it's Ryu. Don't waste time with her. <laughs> and come with your mates. It's Ryu from Street Fighter. We have beers. <laughs> All the best. Why Ryu from Street Fighter? Well, you'll be explained shortly. And poor Miho there. Aww. Gross Glands Production. Apparently, we translated that to be um, Big Balls on the Amstrain. <laughs> Big Balls Production. Good grief. Well done, the GTP team. Thank you for playing. Send us a screenshot of your score on our site. Oh, I shall tell you, we, our score there, it says 153,070 points, but actually that's 2,153,070 points we scored there. GG's in the chat and the comments. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go, that's our final score. 2,153,070 points. Wow. On some thank yous there in the credits and stuff. Um, yeah, what a game. What a game. I don't know if I want to give it a score out of 10. I don't like giving um, homebrew game scores out of 10. I don't like to like critique them too much because it's homebrew. And they've done this for free out their, out their own you know, free time and stuff. And it feels wrong to do that. It's not a commercial release for money. Um, they have real life and real jobs and stuff, so... Oh, look, I got a thank you! Hey, thank you, guys! But, um... Do you know what? I'm so, I'm, so, I'm gonna say it anyway. This is easily a 9 out of 10 game. But, um... Yeah. But, yeah, I don't like... I don't normally like to keep scores out of 10 or percentage scores for, like, homebrew games or anything like that. But, um, this is easily a 9 out of 10 game, isn't it, boys and girls? I can, I can say that. I can easily say that. But um, there you go. Wow. It was Toki GTP. Oh, look, hang on. What's going on here? It's Blanca. Oh, no. Poor Miho. No. See you soon with Mighty Street Fighter. The end. That's why uh, Ryu appeared. Because the next game from the GGP team is Mighty Street Fighter. That's why. That's why uh, the Street Fighter characters appeared at the end here. We're doing a cheeky um, um, promotion for their next game. So look out for that. Mighty Street Fighter from the uh, GGP team coming to an Amstrad near you soon, hopefully. So there you go. I'll be, of course... I'll be covering that in depth on my channel when that comes out for sure. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you all again very soon. Don't forget to um, give us a like and a thumbs up on the video. Um, let me know what, what you think in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you all again very soon. And um, please consider supporting me on Patreon and joining the Am Squad. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 
So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.